Section 2.6, nonlinear inequalities. Example 1, solve x minus 5 times x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Well, let's get the values where this thing is exactly equal to 0. And that would be at x equals 5 and at x equals 3. Now, we're going to put those two values on a number line. So we have 3 here. And we can equal 0, so it's okay to include 3. And it's okay to include 5. Now, we want to test some values in between these numbers. Let's test 2. How about 4? And we'll test 6. Now, let's test 2. We're going to plug 2 in for the x values. 2 minus 5 is negative, And 2 minus 3 is negative. So anything less than 3 will have a positive value when we plug in for the x. Let's test 4. 4 minus 5 is negative, And 4 minus 3 is positive. And a negative times a positive is a negative. So anything in between 3 and 5 will have a negative value. And then when we plug 6 in, we get a positive and a positive. Uh, that's going to be positive. Now, we want the values that are negative, that are less than or equal to 0. So the answer is 3 to 5, and we're going to include both 3 and 5. Example 2, solve this, and we're comparing uh, the left side to 46. And we don't compare things to 46. We compare things to 0. So let's minus 46 from both sides. And that's going to be, there we go, greater than 0. Let's factor we have x minus 12, x plus 3 is greater than 0. Now let's find the values that would make this thing exactly 0. If we plug 12 in, this would be 0. And if we plug negative 3 in for this, we would get 0 as well. So let's put, put these on a number line. We have negative 3 and 12. Now this doesn't have an equal to part, so we're not going to include negative 3 or 12. So let's test negative 4. We can test 0. And we can test 13. Now, when we plug negative 4 in for the x's, we get a negative and a negative. Negative and a negative. That's positive. When we plug 0 in, we get negative and positive. Negative and positive. So that's a negative. And then when we plug 13 in, we get positive and a positive. So we have positive there. Now, we want the values that are greater than 0. In other words, positive. So we have negative infinity to 0. Don't include 0. And then we have 12 to infinity. Those values are also positive. Example 3, solve this. Let's get everything to one side. So it's minus 3x squared. Uh, we already have the minus 22x on this side. And then we would have plus 24 is greater than 0. Now, uh, we'd have to go through the possible rational roots, and that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to plug them in synthetically and find uh, the values that make this 0. As it turns out, 1 makes this 0, uh, 6 makes this 0, and negative 4 makes this 0. So it factors into x minus 1, x minus 6, and x plus 4 is greater than 0. So we already have the values that make this 0, and we'd have to go through the whole process of synthetic division uh, for the sake of time. I'm not going to do that on this video. And uh, let's see, we have negative 4 over here, then we'd have 1, and then we'd have 6. Now, this doesn't say equal to 0, so we're not going to include any of these values. Let's test negative 5. Uh, we could test 0 here, 2 here, and 7 here. So let's test negative 5. Negative 5 would be negative, negative, and negative. That's going to be negative overall. 0 is also, uh, well, not also, but negative, negative, and positive. So negative, negative, positive. That's going to be positive. 2 would be uh, positive, negative, and positive. So that would be negative. And then for 7, everybody is going to be positive. Uh, now we want the positive values. So we want from negative 4 to 1 and then union with 6 to infinity. And we're not including the values that makes this 0 because we don't have the equal part. Example 4, let's uh, get everything to one side and compare stuff to 0. So we have less than or, whoops, uh, we need to include the 16. So we have plus 16x is less than or equal to 0. Let's factor out a 2x. We get x squared minus 6x plus 8, and we can still factor this into x minus 4 and x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Now the zeros are 0 for this one right here, 0, 0 for this one, 4, and uh, x equals 2. 
So let's put these values on a number line. So we can start with 0, then 2, then 4. We do have an equal to on this inequality, so we can include these values that make it 0. Uh, let's test negative uh, 1, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. So when we plug a negative 1 in, we get negative for this piece right here, a negative and a negative. So that's three negatives, that's a negative. When we plug 1 in, we get positive, negative, negative. So positive, negative, negative, that's going to be a positive. With uh, 3, we get positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. That's going to be a negative. And then with 5, everybody is going to be positive. Now, we want the negatives. We want less than 0. And we can include these because of the equal part. Uh, so we want negatives. We have negative infinity to 0. Include that. We never include the infinities. Uh, union with 2 two four example five solve this one well this doesn't factor it doesn't factor so we can have uh, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared which is four minus four a c all over two a which is the quadratic formula so we have negative two plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 12, that's negative 8, uh, all over 2, uh, which would be negative 2 plus or minus 2 squared of 2 over 2. So the zeros, what makes this thing 0, is uh, we have uh, negative 1 plus or minus square root of 2, because we can divide everybody by 2. Now, let's plug one value in here. We can pick anything. Let's pick 0. Uh, zero makes this whole thing positive. Now, because it doesn't cross the x-axis, all any value you'd plug in for x uh, is going to give us some positives. Uh, so when is this thing less than zero? Uh, never. So this has no solution. Now, graphically, what this looks like is uh, we have this vertex at negative b over 2a, which is negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is negative 1 and then comma, negative 1 comma, let's see, 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So we have this vertex at negative 1, 2, and then this parabola opens up. So it doesn't have any zeros. So this parabola will never have negative y values. It'll only have positive y values. Example 6. Let's factor this into x plus 6 x plus 6 is greater than 0, but that's x plus 6 squared is greater than 0. Now, if we look at this parabola, well, let's think of it this way. No matter what you square, it's going to be greater than 0. Uh, so the solution, we can't have this equal to negative 6, though, because that would be equal to 0. Uh, so the solution is negative infinity to negative 6. Don't include negative 6. Don't include negative 6 again, but then go to infinity. Now, the parabola is going to be negative 6, 0. So it's a negative 6 over here, 0, and then opens up. So every value is going to be positive with the exception of the one spot where this is going to be 0. Solve a rational inequality. Well, now there's two places that... Uh, cut, cut, cut. Solve a rational inequality. Example 7, we have 3x plus 4 over x plus 2 minus 3 is less than 0. Well, in order to solve this, we need to get a common denominator here. We're going to multiply by x plus 2 on the top and bottom of this 3 over here. So we have 3x plus 4 minus 3x minus 6 when we distribute a negative 3 through. All over x plus 2 is less than 0. Well, now the 3x's cancel, and we have 4 minus 6. That's going to be negative 2 over x plus 2. Now, the two places that we are interested in is the values that make the top 0, which there are none here, and the values that make the bottom 0, because uh, these functions can change signs across zeros and across vertical asymptotes. So the only interesting place we have is at negative 2 because of this denominator. And we can't allow the denominator to be 0, so we can't count negative 2. You can't ever count values that make the denominator 0. It doesn't matter what the inequality says. 
So we're not going to include this. So we can uh, test negative 3 and maybe negative 1. Uh, so when we test negative 3, we get a negative over a negative. That's positive. So all these values are going to be positive. But when we plug negative 1 in, we get negative 2 over positive 1. That's going to be negative. And we want the negatives. So the answer is negative 2 to infinity. Solve x plus 5 over 2x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 1. Well, we don't compare things to 1. We compare them to 0. So we're going to minus 1, greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to use common denominator, which is 2x minus 6, 2x minus 6. And we have x plus 5 minus 2x plus 6, because we're distributing the negative 1 through. And that's going to be all over 2x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0. Well, now we have negative x plus 11 over, uh, we could do this, we could factor out a, a, a 2 down here, and it's x minus 3. So now we have two places that we're actually interested in. We're interested in x equals 11, because that makes the top 0. And because we have this equal to part, we can, uh, we can count the 11. But you can never allow the denominator to be 0. So uh, with x equals 3, we don't want to equal that. Well, let's throw these on a number line. And these are the two values where the function can change signs over them. Uh, so we have 3 and we have 11. Uh, we can allow the 11, but we cannot allow the 3. Uh, so we have how about 0, how about 4, and how about 12. So now when we plug 0 in, we get positive over, uh, that's going to be negative. So that's going to be a negative. Now with 4, uh, we have negative 4 plus 7 that's a positive over a positive so that's going to be positive and then with 12 we'll have a negative over positive that's going to go back to negative and we want positives we want greater than or equal to zero and the only place this is positive is in between 3 and 11. now we don't want to count 3 but we can include 11. example 9 solve this right here uh, so let's take the top we can have 6x minus 8 is equal to 0 and so 6x is equal to 8 x is equal to uh, 8 6 which is 4 thirds and we can't equal that because it doesn't have an equal to part and then we have x equals 6 and x equals negative 1 but we don't want to include either of those because those are the two values that makes the denominator 0 we can't allow that uh, so we can't ever allow that so let's put these on a number line we have negative 1, uh, then we get uh, 4 thirds, and then we jump all the way up to 6. Now, we, we can't include negative 1, we can't include 4 thirds because we don't have the equal part, and then we can't include 6 because that makes the denominator 0. So how about negative 2 has zeros in here? I always like using 0. That's 1 and a third, so how about uh, just 2? and then 7. So let's test negative 2. We have negative 12 minus 8. That's certainly a negative over negative times a negative, and that overall is going to be negative. 0 is going to be negative, a negative, and a positive. So that's negative over negative. That's positive. When we plug 2 in, we get 12 minus 8. That's positive over negative times positive. So that's a positive over a negative. That's negative. And with 7, everybody is going to be positive. And we want positives greater than 0. Now, don't include negative 1. Don't include 4 thirds. But the values are going to be positive between those numbers. And then we'll union that with don't include 6. And we'll go off to infinity. So from 6 to infinity, we're going to, we're going to have positive values.